Hi everyone, this is Peric from P2 Design. Four years ago, damn that was four years ago, I made a tutorial about rigging equipment slots and switchable parents. It's definitely time to give it a new video with better tricks. Let's get started. In most of my character animation, we can see weapons, because I like fight scenes, and my character switching gears, dropping them, throwing them, and doing fancy stuff with them. Whenever I'm doing this, I may want these pieces of equipment to be attached to one hand, the other, or to nothing, and sometimes get the hand attached to the equipment. What I'm gonna show you can also be used to attach inverse kinematics controllers to any part of the body making contact poses way easier. We'll see two different methods to do that, so let's check them out. Here is what we're going to rig. We have a root bone that controls all the bones. We have our asset and different slots we want the asset to be attached to. For the time being, the asset bone as well as the slot bones are children of the root bone. I can select the asset bone and we are going to use the armature constraint. By default, when we add this constraint, it doesn't work, and its icon is red. To make it work, we need to add target bones. As I do so, a new bone slot is added to the list. So far, a bone always belongs to an armature object. And as a sub-target, I will choose one of the slot bone, the slot.l. If I now select the bone slot.l and I move it, we can see that the asset bone is following. So that's great, we have our first mechanism. But there is a little bug. If I move the root bone, we can see that the asset bone is moving way more than what we are expecting. This is because the armature constraint is additive. So what's happening here is that the asset bone is moved by the root bone, and on top of this, it's also moved by the slot bone, and both motion are adding one on top of the other. So whenever you are using an armature constraint, you need to make sure that the owner of the constraint, our asset bone, doesn't have any parent. To fix that, I can switch to edit mode and whether click on the little cross icon or press Alt P and clear the parent. Now when I move the root bone, the slot bone will follow and the asset bone will follow the slot bone. So what we want in the armature constraint is create a slot for each slot bone but also one for the root bone. And we'll trigger the constraint so that whenever it's not using any of the slot bone, the bone is following the root bone. Now you may have noticed that on this constraint we don't have any influence, but we have weight. You may consider that the owner of the constraint is skinned as if we have made a weight painting to the different bone, and as if it was a vertex. At the moment, the asset bone is assigned to all three bones, so whenever I move one of them, the asset bone will move this transformation by a third. So now our goal is to be able to set an influence of one on one of the bone and set it to zero on the other ones. And whenever we are not using any slot bone, make sure that the root bone is the one with the full weight, so that our bone is following the root. I like to create a custom property that will allow me to tell the asset bone which bone it has to follow. In edit mode, we can create a new bone that we will call properties. We will store the custom property inside this bone. And for the sake of readability, I will give it a custom shape using the bone widget add-on that I covered in this video. In pose mode, we can go to the bone properties and under custom property, create a new custom property. We can click the gear icon to edit the custom property, and as a type, we want to use integers, as we want to switch values, we don't want to transition from one to the other. We can give a name to the custom property, I will call it parent. Our property's range should be from 0 to 3, 0 being the root, and then 1 being the slot.l, and 2 the slot.r. And a good practice is to let the user know that by simply writing a description. 
and then we can press OK to confirm. When the bone is selected, we can access the custom properties through the item panel. Now we want to use this custom property to create a driver. Hovering over the custom property value, we can see the description we just written. We can right click on the parent properties value and choose copy as new driver. And we will use this driver to trigger the weight of our armature constraint. So we can select our asset bone, right click on the first weight and choose paste driver. Then right click again to edit the driver. By default, the driver is returning the average value. It's the value of our custom property. I like to set the value of the weights to zero or to one, depending on the property value. So in the driver type, I will switch from average value to scripted expression. And we will use a simple Boolean operation asking Blender if our custom property parent is equal to zero. To do so, we need to type in the expression parent equal equal zero. So we are now asking Blender does the parent custom property equal to zero. And if it's a yes, it will return a value of one. If it's a no, a value of zero. Blender is currently returning a value of zero because the parent is set to one. As I set the parent to zero, now the result is one. I can now right click on the existing driver to copy it and right click on the other weights to paste the driver. Then we can right click on those drivers and edit them. For the second driver, I want to ask Blender if the parent value is equal to one and on the third, if the parent value is equal to two. This way, whatever the value of the parent custom property, only one of the three drivers will return a value of one. And now I can simply switch parent by changing the value of my custom property. So if I was to apply this concept to a character, I will simply add the constraint to the controller of the gun, for example, and the armature constraint will be targeting the root bone, the right hand or the left hand. I can manually position the gun in the parent hand and then control the gun using the hand. The previous method is the fastest and the simplest, but it doesn't allow us to match a specific position like matching the hand of the character, for example. Because we are just switching parent, we're not forcing a transformation. So let's fix that. But before, if you're enjoying this video, please consider leaving it a like, subscribing and dropping a nice comment. So let's get back to our previous rig. What I will do is make sure I can see it through the bone as we will need to duplicate them. Now back on the asset bone, in pose mode, I will remove the existing armature constraint. We will use the copy transform constraint. So I don't want to use it directly on the asset bone as we won't be able to manipulate it anymore as the constraint will override any of the transformation we do manually. Instead, I'm duplicating the bone and create an MCH asset bone. Instead of using our slot bone, that will be our hand bone, for example, directly to constraint this MCH bone, we will create intermediary bone too. Those MCH bone will be the children of the slot bone, so they will follow wherever the slot bone is doing, and we will use those to drive or to constraint the MCH asset bone. The benefit is to then give whatever orientation we want to those MCH bones, but we will see that in a bit. The MCH slot bone are children of the slot bone, while our asset bone is a children of the MCH asset. So the asset bone will be following the MCH asset, but will still be able to transform the asset bone on top of this parenting. Basically, we are just keeping control of the asset bone. Now we just need to add a couple of copy transform constraint onto the MCH asset bone, targeting the MCH slot bone. As we do so, the MCH asset bone jump or snap to the MCH slot bone, and so does the asset bone. Through the parenting chain, we are copying all the transform from the slot bone to the asset bone but we still have control over our asset bone. So now we can simply create a couple of drivers, exactly the same we used before, to trigger the influence of those copy transform constraints. 
To trigger the influence of the first constraint, we will ask Blender if the value of our parent variable is equal to 1. And for the second driver on the second copy transform constraint, we will ask Blender if the parent value is equal to 2. When the value of the custom property is equal to 0, the asset bone will follow the MCH asset bone that is following the root bone. But if I set a value of 1 on our property, the asset bone will snap to the slot.l. And with a value of 2, you guessed it, it will snap to the other slot bone. Now the benefit of choosing this method over the armature constraint method is we can change the orientation of those MCH slot bone and the asset bone will follow this orientation thanks to the copy transform constraint. So we can adapt an object to the hand of our character. Let's see how. If you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. Learn actual professional techniques or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. In this example, we want our rifle to fit in the hands of our character. I created the same setup. I have two hand controllers that are the parent of two MCH hand slots. The gun controller is parented to the MCH gun. And the MCH gun has two copy transform constraints with a driver triggered by a custom property. As I use the custom property, we can see the rifle snapping to one hand or the other, but its position is not perfect. To fix that, I will first snap the rifle to the left hand, for example. And now I will select the MCH hand slot and I will pose it so that it matches the hand orientation, as if our robot was manipulating the rifle with the left hand. And now I want to tell Blender that the current position of the MCH bone should be its default position. And it's very simple. With the MCH bone selected, I simply have to press Ctrl A, apply pose as rest pose. Now beware, by default, this operation is applied to all the bones in your rig. So make sure you open the contextual menu and you choose selected bone only. The point is that the current pose of the bone is its actual pose in edit mode 2. So we can do the same for the right hand, or I can take a bet and try to symmetrize the left hand and see if it matches. And it kind of matches, so that's good for me. This setup, when using the default position of the rifle, if I snap it to one hand or the other, it will automatically snap to that controller. This gives you a good starting point whenever you want a character to handle any asset. If you want to go any further though, I advise you to watch this video next. Have a great day, I'll see you in the next one.